Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the clock out of my 1951 Dodge Cornette. I'm not sure exactly how standard these clocks were. This one is made by the GOW Board Corporation. And I know that it was a licensed add-on for Mopar. I'm going to show you a bit about how to get yours working and troubleshoot it if it's not. Uh, this is it, obviously, with the casing off. It has this plate, which goes on the front. And so there will be a few screws that you need to remove to get the plate off of there. That's not entirely necessary unless the gears here are dirty and need cleaning. Mine, I just cleaned all of the gears, so now it's ticking properly. And I'll show you that in a second as far as cleaning goes. The back casing here pretty much comes off with three screws. There's a few securing it to uh, the casing. So there'll be a few flathead screws there. And then there's another one that goes from a little grounding bar, this. So this secures onto there and then onto one of the casing screws. And that's to ground the casing here. Mine broke when I originally took it apart because the screw didn't come out. And so I was able to resolder it. Uh, so here you can hear now it just ran out of wind. This thing pretty much cycles every seven minutes or so that you'll hear a little tick sound. And what it's doing is there's an electric contact right here that shorts. So when the clock runs out of wind, it moves this little bar down to short circuit onto that copper contact, which is getting battery voltage through the fuse. So there'll be one wire that's secured here and then go through the fuse and then go through the wire and to the contact. And then when it needs power, that little switch will close and what it does is energize this electromagnetic coil that you see through there and it moves this bar up and that winds the spring and so you can sort of see though it goes through its wind fairly quickly and depending on how good of a charge it got has the little contact there only makes um, it only connects for a very short amount of time. And sometimes it won't fully reach the top. So it may cycle sooner rather than later, depending on how well that system is working. And then as far as the rest of the contacts in here go, mine had some grime buildup, so it wasn't really ticking correctly. You can adjust the speed of the clock here on the back, but if that's not your problem, what I did is I doused it in rubbing alcohol. So I just used isopropyl alcohol to sort of break down grime, which that can definitely help to loosen things if you just sort of douse it in some rubbing alcohol. Just sort of the gears here. And then I used 3-in-1 silicone oil. This works very well for clocks. I've used it in pocket watches. And just it works very reliably to clean and lubricate. Don't get too much in there because it can also cause problems if it's swimming in oil. But I just applied some oil carefully to the ends of the pins. And that helps to loosen things up and get it working. You can see it's a bit oily still right now. If you wanted to do this professionally, what I would do is take it to a watch repair shop and they usually have 
a uh, hydrosonic sort of uh, cleaning device that they basically will take apart all the gears and put it inside of this ultrasonic cleaner and it'll actually remove the debris and then it'll be 100% shiny. So if you want to spend more money on that, that would probably be a better option. However, this method did work pretty well uh, on mine. You can see it's definitely ticking. And additionally, if you're having problems with it stopping intermittently, what I did is take a little tiny toothpick and go in here on this gear and scrape carefully going from the outside in till you remove grime. Because this gear that you see right there had some black buildup and so did that gear and I just carefully scraped it off. You wanna be very gentle because if you snap one of these gears, it's pretty much game over. And you'd have to buy a whole new clock or somehow get the gear repaired. Especially this gear, the flywheel, you want to make sure that you do not touch it unless you absolutely have to. That one has one of the smallest pins, and those, if they break, they're just, yeah. So, those are a bit of my tips and tricks to sort of refurbish your dashboard clock. If you have any questions about this, just let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the other videos on my channel.